Hello, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the fundamental counting principle, the definition of it, and some applications. We're actually going to start with the applications. So think about these three applications, pause the video, try to see if you can come up with the answer, and then we'll talk about them. First, if you roll a red die and a green die, so die is the singular of dice, how many outcomes are possible? Second, how many three-digit numbers exist that are even? And third, if you have four clean shirts, two clean pairs of pants, and three clean pairs of socks, then how many different outfit combinations do you have? So pause the video now and see what you come up with. Okay, hopefully you've had some time to think about these. So the first one, if you roll a red die and then a green die, how many outcomes are possible? So if we think about this, the red die, there's six possibilities, right? You can roll a one, you can roll a two, three, four, five, or six. And then a green die has the same number of outcomes. However, if we roll, we'll just say we roll the red die first. If we roll the red die first and then roll the green die, let's say we roll the red die and we roll a one. Then the green die, we could roll also a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six. Which means if we roll a one on red, there are six possible outcomes for the two dice total, because you have a one, 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 two, one, three, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the same thing is true if you roll the red die and you roll a two. There would also be six outcomes. And there would be six outcomes if you rolled a three on the red die and then whatever on the green die. And same with four and five and six. So it turns out we have six sixes or 36 combinations. Now, if you're a game, a board game player, you might have already known that. Um, just if you roll dice a lot or do something with dice a lot, you probably might have already known that. Um, but yeah, it would be 36. Where did 36 come from? There were six possibilities with the red die and six possibilities with the green die, and we multiplied those possibilities together. The second example, how many three-digit numbers exist that are even? There's a few different ways that we can think about this, but one is you might just say, well, let's just start listing them. That would start with 100, and that would go up to, we'll say 999, although 999 is not even, so if you're counting, don't count 999. Um, but there has to be, something that we can do without having to sit there and go 100, 102, 104, 106, because that would be really annoying to do. So one thing is we might say, well, here there are 900 numbers, half of which have to be even. So if we divide by two, we arrive at 450. More mathematically, I mean, that, that, not that that's not mathematical, but <laughs> using the fundamental counting principle that we haven't even talked about yet, we might say, okay, if there's a three digit number, there's a hundreds, a tens, and a ones place. The hundreds could be any digit one to nine, right? It can't be zero, because if it's zero, that's not a three digit number, then it's a two digit number. Um, so one to nine, there's nine possibilities. The tens place could be anything. It could be zero to nine. And so that would give us 10 possibilities here. And then the last place, it has to be even. So the ones has to be even, so it could be zero, two, four, six, or eight. So there's five possibilities. And then if we think back to what we did with the first one, there were nine possibilities for the first number, and then there's 10 from each of those, and then from each of those, there's five. So really what we wanna do here is multiply, and there's our 450 again, just like we got when we tried it the other way. Our last example, if you have four clean shirts, two clean pairs of pants, and three clean pairs of socks, how many outfit combinations are possible? So for shirts, you have four options. For pants, you have three options. So this is shirt, pants, and socks you have, sorry, pants you have two, two, that's what it says, two, and then for socks you have three. And so what would we do here? Well, it's kind of the same idea. You have four possibilities. Each one of those four would have two pairs of pant options, and then each of those would have three. So really what we want to do is we want to multiply four times two times three, which is 24. So there would be 24 outfit options for this last thing. All three of these, well, when we did the multiplication, the six times six, the nine times 10 times five, the four times three times two, that is the fundamental counting principle. So what it says is in a sequence of K events in which the first event can occur in K sub one ways, just meaning there's K sub one possibilities. So like for the, the shirt question, there were four possibilities. The second event can occur in K sub two ways, 
and on and on, then the number of ways that we can make arrangements would be k sub 1 times k sub 2 times k sub 3, blah, 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 times k sub n. So it's sometimes it's called the multiplication principle. You might be able to see why. Let's look at another example. The pick three lottery claims you need just a little bit of luck to win. Each of the three digits is drawn from a separate pool containing the digits 0 through 9. How many different three digit combinations are possible. So if we lay this out, the way I like to lay out my counting principle questions is I say, okay, here's the first number that's drawn, here's the second number that's drawn, here's the third number that's drawn. And then beneath it, I'm gonna write what the options are. So it says each one is zero through nine. So this one is zero through nine, this one is zero through nine, and this one is zero through nine. Well, zero through nine, that's 10 total. So there's 10 options for the first number, and there's 10 options for the second number, and there's 10 options for the third number, and the counting principle tells us we need to multiply these. When we multiply these, we end up with 1,000. So there are 1,000 different combinations to win the pick three. I'd say you need more than just a little bit of luck. In another example, so if you have a cheap master lock, um, one way in which they're made is they have a three-digit combination, and the three-digit combination uses the numbers 0 through 39. For master locks, consecutive numbers cannot repeat, but otherwise there are no restrictions. So this may be a good time to talk about restrictions. Um, sometimes when things are dependent on the previous thing, so the second thing to happen is dependent on the first thing to happen, we might have restrictions on what that second thing can be. And so with this master lock, it's saying there is a restriction because consecutive numbers cannot repeat. So that means if the first number in the combination is one, the second one cannot also be one. It can be anything but one. Okay, so we have a three number combination. So there's the first number, the second number, the third number. The first number is going to have no restrictions. It's going to be anything from 0 to 39. That's a total of 40 possibilities. Now for the second, the middle one, the first number is assigned, right? So it's 1 or 39 or whatever, somewhere in between or 0. Um, the second one can't be that same number. So it can be anything from 0 to 39 except whatever that first thing was except whatever happened here. So that removes one possibility, meaning there are now 39 possibilities, right? Because it can't repeat. And then the third number can be anything except whatever the second number was. So it can be zero to 39, except for whatever the second number was. Now it is allowed, it doesn't say that the, it can't repeat at all. So if the first number is one, and the second number is 2, the third number just can't be 2, but it could be 1 again. So there would be 39 possibilities. The counting principle tells us multiply these together. 40 times 39 times 39 is 60,840. So if you buy a master lock and then you lose the combination sheet, you have to try potentially 60,840 combinations until you might finally find the right one. Whew, hopefully it doesn't come to that. It might be worth it just to buy a new one if that does happen. Okay, two more examples. In this example, there's a raffle in which 20 people participate. Three names are drawn, and then there's three gift cards of varying amounts given to each of the three winners. How many ways could the names be selected? So again, I don't know why my magic thing is three here, but not every example is three. In fact, I think the next example is not three. Okay, so we've got the first prize, there's the second prize, and there's the third prize. And we're assuming that these 20 people each are entered once. That's the assumption that I'm going to put on this particular problem, um, just to make my life easier. So we would say, okay, there's 20 names. Any of the 20 could be selected for the first prize. Then one person's name has been selected. So now there's only 19 possible names because there's one fewer. And then another name is drawn and now we only have 18 names left to choose from because the first two are no longer eligible for the third prize so the pr counting principle tells us we need to multiply these three uh, outcomes so it'd be 20 times 19 times 18 which is 6840 so what this means is that there's 600 6840 uh, ways that the names could be drawn so that could be anyone winning first prize second prize or third prize so we'll say compose Okay, and in our last example where we don't have three, we have five, yay. So Mike has five various colored binders he wants to put on his bookshelf. How many different ways can the five binders be arranged? And when I do this with my students, what I find is that they get confused by the way that I say this. So we're just gonna say there's a bookshelf and you should know that I'm a really good artist, so you should be intimidated by this. There's my bookshelf. 
He's got room in his bookshelf to put these five binders, we're gonna say just vertically. So one binder is gonna go here, one's gonna go here, next to it, next to it, and next to it, and then there's gonna be a bookend here so that they don't all fall down. So that's what I, I don't mean like you can put them sideways or you can put one on the top shelf and three on the bottom shelf, not like that. Just they're, we're just gonna put the five binders right next to each other on the bookshelf and they're all different colors. So let's say we have a red one, a blue one, an orange one, a purple one, and a green one. How many ways can these be arranged? Okay, so the first binder all the way to the left could be any one of the colored binders. So we have currently five to choose from. So we'll say there's five options for the one all the way on the left. Now one has been chosen, we're just gonna cross it out. We're gonna pretend like it's red. Now how many options can go next to that one? Well, now there's only four options left. Okay, now another one's been chosen. So now in the middle, there's only three left to choose from. Now there's three on the shelf and two still sitting on the, the ground or wherever Mike has them. Now there's only two left. And then finally at the end, you're not gonna have a choice, right? There's only one binder sitting on the floor. That one has to go all the way to the right. Then what does the counting principle tell us to do? It tells us multiply these together. When we multiply five times four times three times two times one, we do end up with, well, let's see, that's 20. That's 120. So there'd be 120 ways that Mike could arrange these binders. This has been an example of the counting principle. And this last example is actually something else. So if you watch the next video on factorials, you'll see that this has a, another uh, kind of like a sub, sub piece of the counting principle called factorials. Thank you for stopping by.